Looks like we've got some stuff to talk about today. What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sizabu. I typically open up cards, I do travel videos, I open up other things. But today, I wanted to go ahead and talk about my Pokemon game collection. It's a brand new year and I wanted to start doing different types of videos. I know that in the past I've talked about Pokemon Sleep, I've done other weird, interesting, cool things, but I know that a lot of people have requested me to go over my video game collection and don't worry, I've got a video on that coming because I've got a ton of games that I want to show you all. But I was kind of sitting in bed thinking, I was like, you know what, I've never really shown off all the Pokemon games that I've played before and that I have in my collection. Usually when I open things, I kind of have my game collection in the background. So today we're actually going to go over some of the games that I've got in my collection. So sit back, relax. I'm going to talk about some of my favorite Pokemon games. I hope you'll stay with me. So for me, it all started in probably the late 90s. I was actually born in 96, the year when Pokemon came out. And it started with Fire Red. As of now, I do not have my original save on there, but I do have a shiny war turtle and what I'm planning on doing with that war turtle is I want to do some type of ribbon quest with it. It's the only one on my team. It actually only took me 300 resets so super proud of it. Be on the lookout for that video too. Fire Red is really good. I'm gonna try to rate these Pokemon games out of a like 1 to 10 so I'm gonna give Fire Red probably an 8 out of 10. And listen, by the way, this is my opinion. You're more than welcome to share your opinion in the comments below, but just know that like the way I rate games is just the way of like nostalgia that I feel and how good they are to me. So after Fire Red, there was actually a large gap of me playing Pokemon games, but since I've grown up into a responsible adult with adult money, I have managed to get some of the Pokemon games that I was missing in my collection that I missed out on. So right now we have Leaf Green, and by the way, for the games that I haven't played, I'm not going to rate them because obviously I haven't played them yet. But even though Leaf Green pretty much is the same as Fire Red, just kind of take it as that that's what I'm rating it as if I rated it the same as like Fire Red or something. Next up, we have Emerald. We also have Sapphire. And we have Ruby as well. Oh, and to end with the Game Boy games, we do have... Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. I'm gonna talk about Mystery Dungeon here in a second when I get to the DS games because oh, if you all know me, you know I love Mystery Dungeon. Jump forward to 2007. Yeah, I know, going back from the early 2000s, late 90s, all the way to 2007. I had actually stopped playing for a while. I didn't have a game console. I think it was for one of my birthdays. I was actually gifted a DS. Everybody in the fourth grade had them. I was freaking out. I remember this girl walking in with Nintendogs on her pink pearl. I want to say DS Lite, but she may have had the original DS too. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have one. Well, I got Nintendogs, but then all of a sudden I was like, oh yeah, Pokemon exists. I was into that. Pokemon Diamond. That is the next game that I started playing, and I can tell you, I have such a nostalgia trip for Pokemon Diamond. I love the Sinnoh region. Cynthia is definitely one of the toughest champions. I remember that even with Dialga on my team, being as young as I was, I could not beat Cynthia. <laughs> So I'm going to give Pokemon Diamond probably about an 8.5 out of 10 just because it's one of my favorites. I love Sinnoh. You'll also see that later in the video too, my love for Sinnoh. So moving forward, of course after Diamond, I also played Pokemon Platinum. I love Platinum. It's basically a better version of Diamond, so that's why I'm going to give it like an 8.7. Um, it was my favorite game growing up on the DS, and I just absolutely loved it. I remember when we first got to go to the Distortion World, that was crazy with the 3D effects kind of on a DS light. It was like revolutionary to me. I was like, oh my gosh. And the parade thing that you could do with the Wi-Fi, trading with people. And also, I remember when I was a kid, little me, I would go to my local library because I didn't have Wi-Fi at the time in my house. And I remember logging on for the first time and seeing shiny Pokemon for the first time in double battles and I was like why are they a different color and then I would sit there and think wait a minute did I run into shinies into fire red did I did I accidentally kill them oh my gosh to think so now I always have to live with that for the rest of my life you know wondering if I um 
encountered a Pokemon in Fire Red, maybe thought it was sick or something, so yay. I'm gonna love living with that thought for the rest of my life. So kind of in between the Diamond and the Black, Diamond and Pearl, Black and White uh, series, I actually got into the Pokemon side games. And there was one series in particular that will always be really, really special to me. This is why Gen 4 is possibly just the best gen to me. I got into the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. And I actually didn't play this when this came out. It came out in 2006, so I played it after I discovered Diamond. I went and begged for it. I fell in love with the story. So then what I had done is I went and got time as well. And there's actually a story with that. Some of these actually do not have the games in them. Womp womp. <laughs> um, back when I was in middle school, I actually was um, obviously huge into gaming, getting back into gaming. And instead of packing all my games around in this little thing, I actually packed them around in my glasses case. And I actually had them stolen from me. And it was like maybe $300 worth of games. So even that copy of Diamond right there is not my original copy. In fact, it is my third copy because I even lost a copy as an adult. Yeah, responsible. But anyway, next comes possibly the best Pokemon side game to me, period. It is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. I love this game. It's my favorite. Um, it's actually why Shaman is my favorite legend. And I gotta tell you, I had some memories with this game, especially going into the future, spoiler alert, going into the future for the first time, you know, discovering and fighting Dusknor, fighting with Grovile alongside you. Really, really awesome series. I give Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Ex Explorers of Sky at least a 9 out of 10. It is my favorite thing ever. I love it. It's my favorite. I know I'm gonna keep saying that, but it's really special to me. Let me know what you all think about the Mystery Dungeon series in the comments below. But let's go ahead and move on to the next series of DS games that I played. After discovering the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, the next games came out, the main games, but it was also the remake of stuff that would come out. I got into Pokemon Soul Silver. I loved this game growing up and just being able to walk with your Pokemon side by side with you instead of just kind of having them limited to the parks was really, really cool. And to top it off, if they were shiny, they also displayed shiny in the overworld too. Also, not my copy of Heart Gold, but here's Heart Gold too, just in case. Also, I want to talk about too how expensive these games have become. I had my game for Soul Silver, but I lost my case and I was just trying to find you know, ways to get my case again. Oh, and on top of that, I also lost my Pokey Walker. I don't know what happened. I think that got stolen as a kid too, but what doesn't get stolen from you when you're a kid? So I actually do have a brand new Pokey Walker that I kind of need to set up. Very cool. And then I have um, a case that I bought for my original game. So also one big thing, I did get into the Pokemon Ranger series, but I don't have um, the rest of the Ranger series. All that I played was Shadows of Omnia. I can remember as a kid, it kind of being a little bit difficult for me because I want to say that it came out in 2008. I was still a little bit young when it came out. But anyway, Ranger series, I would probably give that, uh, I want to say a seven just because didn't really know how to work it. Can't really remember the plot too good, but it was still a good game. Oh, and referring back to Soul Silver and Heart Gold, I definitely want to give those games at least an 8.7. Referring back to the Shadows of Omnia stuff, I actually wound up kept keeping some of like the information on like how to transfer things. I remember back then you could get the Manaphy egg and transfer it back into the main game. So there's that little pamphlet just in case no one really knows about it. But yeah, I do have that still. I can't really remember where I put the main book at, but it's really cool. And then of course there's Happini with the Manaphy egg too. I also forgot to mention, and obviously I don't have a physical copy of it because it's stuck on my Wii, Pokemon Ranch. I really want to stream that game. I really want to do a playthrough of Pokemon Diamond for you all and then just have a relaxing stream where we do Pokemon Ranch. Let me know if that's a good idea because I feel like Ranch doesn't get the appreciation that it does. Obviously, it's not playable anymore, but I do have a copy of it. And I know that it was completely eradicated when the Wii store shut down. So I'm really hoping that nothing ever happens to my Wii, but Pokemon Ranch, it was so cool. I remember people were like, oh, why, why would you get that? All you do is stare at Pokemon and I would look at them and like, you don't understand. It's the only way you can get Mew. 
like right now, legit, I have to have it. So I remember I worked really hard in school. I saved up my allowance money and I bought it. I think it was like $15, but it was like 1,500 Wii shop points. So I never, I do not regret that decision buying that game. I am glad that I still have it because you can't get it anywhere else now. I want to start off with Gen 5. So after completely getting attached to or getting back into Pokemon with Gen 4, I did play Pokemon white. I love Zekrom. And look, once again, just like Shadows of Omnia, I did keep those little code cards that you can get. And this was how you could get Victini back in the day. Now, of course, everything's kind of over Wi-Fi, but they do have instructions with this. So it's really cool to kind of look at. It's kind of like a blast from the past. And I kind of keep them as little collectibles. I like to keep everything about the games. You know, you'll never know. I do have that, and I do have my original copy of White in the game. But I kind of do want to just take the time to look at these games, too, because they're really cool. I kind of kept them in the best condition that I could. I really kind of did take care of my games for being as young as I was. But they're DS games, too, you know. I, you have to be pretty rough with them in order to um, completely break them. So next up, instead of getting um, White 2, I got Black 2 because I liked the way the Kiram looked. So we also have the front and back of that, and I do have, once again, the chip, and I have the booklet for that as well. My original copy. So this is where things start to become like, yes, I have the original copy for it. So with that, we have concluded the regular DS games, and I do want to show off cool something cool as I got as an adult. I do have the po Pikachu 3DS XL in pretty much good condition. There's the back of it. Yes, it still has its pen. And then here is the screen. I've got some awesome wallpaper and everything that I bought right before the eShop went down. So for the black and white series, I'm actually probably going to give it an 8.2 out of 10, just because ah, those sprites are very nostalgic to me. I really love them. Oh, and the theater uh, side game that you could do. That was really cool. But overall, I do like Unova. That's pretty much all with the DS collection. Now let's go ahead and move on to the GameCube stuff. So in between the DS and the regular 3DS, I actually used to take trips to Half Price Books because I was growing up a little bit. I believe in high school, I wound up picking up Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. That was actually my first GameCube game. I didn't really know too much about it, and I was just like, Shadow Lugia, that looks pretty cool. So, honestly, really cool game. Um, very hard to shiny hunt in this game. I know that like once a shadow Pokemon like is can technically be shiny, but once it's purified, it can actually shift and it re-rolls again to be shiny. But overall too, the plot of the game and everything was really cool. So here's what the inside of this case looks like as well. Uh, this is my original copy, I believe. And um, I did get this at half price books for maybe 20 bucks. So this was back then, so it actually wasn't too expensive. Once again, not a part of my collection, but I do have Pokemon Coliseum, and I have the bonus disc as well. Um, now, this is the regular game, obviously, and I actually need to sit down and play this, but it also has the book, everything with it. I don't know how much technically this was gotten for, but still really cool to have, and I'm glad that I have it. And with the bonus disc, there we go. It's got a sneak peek of Jirachi Wishmaker on it, which is really cool. And then I believe this is how you can get Jirachi. Now, this case did come um, from another person, so it kind of does have Mark Sharpie on the back of it, but that's okay. So if you open this up, this is what this looks like, and it's got the advertisement for Jirachi Wishmaker as well. I can't rate Colosseum because I've never played it. But with Gale of Darkness, I really liked it. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So this item is a little bit different. There is an English copy to this game, and it's like $400. I don't even know how much it goes for now. It's really ridiculous. But we've got Pokemon Box in Japanese. I did not get this originally when it came out. We did get this way, way later. So I know that a lot of people kind of have never probably seen this before. But it is a way to store your Pokemon on the, Je on the GameCube. So I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to kind of show it off for you all. This is during Gen 3. We've got this, comes in a clear case, and then boom, when you show it out, it's got that special special memory card with it. It's got the disc, and then we'll also kind of take a look at the book too. So basically, here's the book. Once again, it is Gen 3, so it's got the three starters on the back, and it basically kind of just tells you like how to work it, what to do. I think it's really cool. Basically, for all you newbies out there, it's Pokemon Home, Pokemon Bank. 
And then of course, once again, Jirachi Wishmaker was coming out. So here's the advertisement for it. Never really played it once again because I haven't had the reason to store Pokemon. So we're definitely not going to rate a storage game. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the 3DS games. So before we go back to the main games, I did want to talk about the Mystery Dungeon series on the 3DS. I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, 6 out of 10, I am not a fan of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates of Infinity. I just don't like the playthrough mechanic of it. It wasn't fun, although Hydreon, the story with him was kind of cool. Um, I just wasn't a fan. I know that's probably an unpopular opinion, but um, trying to scan like the drinks, I remember, to like open up the Infinity Gates, I actually probably didn't even really finish it. I want to say that it came out around the time I was entering high school, and I did get it day one, but I wound up putting it down after maybe a few months. But I do have this game. I still think that every Pokemon game that I have in my collection deserves a little bit of recognition. Hey, look, there's an old Club Nintendo code that I probably never use. And of course, there's my original game with it. So this is a copy back from 2013. And then, of course, moving on, I'm just going to go ahead and skip. I did get Super Mystery Dungeon. Now, I think that that is a lot better. I'm going to give that a 7.5 just because nothing beats Pokemon Explorers of Sky. I did not keep the book for this. And again, I don't think it came with the book starting after a while. Um, some 3DS games had cool designs in them. Others didn't. And then obviously there's my original chip. I actually did wind up beating. Um, Super Mystery Dungeon, but once again, nothing is really is as good as Explorers of Sky. Actually, one of my first Pokemon games for the 3DS was Pokemon Rumble Blast. Now, I really liked this game. I'm actually going to give it um, a 7.3. There we go. Out of 10. Just because, obviously, it's not as good as the main Pokemon games or other side games that have come out. But I remember going through, and I know that people do shiny hunting in this game still. I think in the later game. I don't know which console. Maybe it's, I don't think it's for the Wii U. Maybe. But um, people do still shiny hunt in this game. And I had a lot of fun. And I remember paying for it day one. And look, I still have my little book and everything with it. And this is the original copy of when it came out back in 2011. This game this game. I did indeed play Y. I put over a thousand hours into Y. Mainly shiny hunting. I went hardcore when Y came out. Granted, I'm going to give Y probably, and I'm trying not to be too picky, an 8.5 just because of how much I played it, how much I loved it. When I switched over from the regular DS to the 3DS, I really went hardcore into gaming. I remember that I would basically sneak and stay up late night playing underneath the covers, but a, what, you know, what kid wouldn't? And uh, the 3DS, I, I, I still feel the effects of the 3D on my eyes, but it was totally worth it. Um, I love that the Pokédex had, I want to say, over 800 Pokémon, and it had almost every Pokémon all up until the Kalos region, but um, you had to transfer them in, so that was the only part, but I love Mega Evolution. I cannot wait for a remake of Y. This game is a little bit controversial. Yeah, 7.8 out of 10, or 7.9 out of 10, too much water. We're going to be talking about Alpha Sapphire. That is the game that I played. A lot of people didn't like it, and I'll say it was okay, so I'm still going to give it maybe a 7.5 out of 10. Um, it is not my favorite remake, but... It's not the worst, and I will go over that a little bit. Obviously, it had new Mega Evolutions in it. I love the Mega Evolutions for the Hoenn starters. Really cool. I believe it had some extra ones in there, too, like Salamence and... I don't think maybe Tyranitar. I'm not sure. Maybe Tyranitar was still why, but I still actually thoroughly enjoyed Pokemon Alpha Sapphire too. Oh, and of course, Pikachu in cosplay, if you want to look at that right there. But, alright, let's go ahead. We are done with just the that gen. Let's go ahead and move on to the next gen. So this game will always have a special place in my heart just because I was going through a really hard summer. I want to say it was right after I graduated high school so kind of getting more into current times but I'm talking about Pokemon Moon. I remember when the starters were announced I hated them and then I fell in love with Rowlet. I just loved Rowlet, everything about Rowlet so I wound up choosing Rowlet when it came out. So, Pokemon Moon. I'm actually going to give this an 8.5. Just because I really thoroughly enjoyed the SOS method with shiny hunting. I enjoyed the plot. I enjoyed going around the different islands. And 
for the first time ever, you didn't have to have an HM slave on your team. You could pretty much just hit a button and then boom, it was there. And also, I really liked Lily and I liked her brother's character development. Also, Lusamine's actually a pretty cool villain and, you know, the team as well. Now, Skull's a pretty lame team, but I do like Guzma. So, yeah, I will say that Moon was actually pretty good. But if we're talking about Ultra Moon, I'm going to go ahead and give it a six. It is the worst remake of the game say at least for the 3ds stuff i actually enjoyed alpha sapphire more but um just because there was almost nothing new about it i just really didn't enjoy it as much so don't worry there is a more recent remake that came out that i'll talk about i did at least eventually wind up finishing ultra moon but there's a game that came out recently you all probably know what i'm talking about that is a remake that i am not even at the third gym so let's Granted, if this game had came out as a full version of Sun and Moon, I would think it was an amazing game. And I will say that this game has possibly one of the hardest Pokemon fights I've ever experienced in a series. Necrozma, like Ultra Light Form. That boss was hard and I still have nightmares about it. Oh no! Crazy. Crazy. Let's go ahead and actually take a step back and go all the way back to the N64 era. So all these games I'm actually not going to go over too much because I've never played them and I collected them as an adult and I do need to sit down and play them. They're for the 60 N64. Hey you Pikachu. I've never actually played it. I've watched people play it. I've seen the Ultra Meme where with Clefairy. I think that maybe that's from this. I don't know. It probably isn't. But I, I know it's from one of these games. And yes, I do have Pokemon Battle Stadium or Stadium 1 and 2. I have watched these games played. I have never played them though. So I really do need to sit down and play them. I just know that the ultimate meme comes from. Oh, and wait, let me reach over and grab this one real quick. Also, I did forget about Snap. That's right. I have actually never played the original Snap either, but I really did miss that on the N64 era. I didn't have an N64 growing up, but once again, I am a responsible adult with a responsible adult money. So I eventually plan to sit down and play these games. Now we're actually gonna move on to the Wii era, which I did play a lot more of those games. Going back to Gen 4 and possibly one of the most popular like 3D battle Pokemon games back in the time, we're talking about Battle Revolution. I did play this game a lot. I remember getting up before school and actually playing Wi-Fi battles on the Wii with my shiny Pokemon and stuff like that from Diamond and Platinum, and it was really, really fun. I'm actually going to give Battle Revolution probably about, I want to say, just for a battling game, an 8.5 out of 10, just because it was really, really, really fun as a kid. I remember um, decorating my character, battling people online, and I do remember some parts of the story being a little bit difficult. The rental Pokemon, oh my gosh. I remember getting stuck on a certain area. It may be the Sunset Coliseum. This constant looping, I could not beat it just because I couldn't time or get the typings right and beat, I think it was the girl dressed up as the Pikachu, or maybe no, it was the guy, the boy dressed up as Groudon. Oh my gosh, it was so hard. But I believe that this is my original copy of Pokemon Battle Revolution. I know I probably scratched up scratch it up as a kid so this may not be the same disc but this is possibly the same case i do have the book with this game i actually don't know how much battle revolution goes for now but it even in the booklet shows um like kind of how to like transfer pokemon from diamond i don't know if you all can see this pokemon diamond into the game and save it i really thought it was a cool concept i really wish that instead of home being the way that it is now that you could transfer your pokemon to the switch kind of like have like a ranch game going on a more expanded version of picnicking or camping like from sword and you can just sit and collect pokemon relax with them and maybe even have like a 3d battling mode or you know even if they would do this in the main games to kind of expand on it but uh, my feelings wouldn't be hurt if they kind of made their next game kind of had something like that. I think it would be cool. 
I really want Pokemon Ranch back. I know I'm probably the only one saying that, but I really do want it. I want it back. These two games I never played, but I wound up picking them up as adult, as an adult. So we've got the two Poke Park games. Really cool. I have actually always wanted to sit down and stream these too. I do actually have an old kind of retro capture card that I could play. Like I said, guys, let me know if you want me to play some of these games. And I'll definitely look into um, sitting down and getting the setup ready and trying to play them. I know that I do want to play some GameCube games for you all and I still want to try to find a way to stream Pokemon Ranch. I know that it's a little hard to stream Pokemon games for the DS, but we'll try. So I still have the book and everything for Poke Park. Pikachu's Adventure. There's that. Actually still in pretty good condition. The book for this one's actually pretty thick. Very thick. And then we've got Poke Park 2. And I do have the book for that. And there is the original disc. Alright, that's everything. Let's move on to the Switch games. So last up is probably my thickest pile besides my DS and 3DS games. It all began on the Switch with Pokemon Sword. That was the one that I picked with Zacian. And I want to go ahead and say that, yeah, it had a rough beginning. It didn't look the greatest for a Switch game. But I can tell you that I still had a lot of fun with it. I didn't put nearly about as much hours as I did in Alola or even with Diamond. But I'm still going to give this game an 8 just because I really liked it still. It's a Pokemon game. You'll find that most things that I give are around 8s. And also later on, I did actually go and wind up picking up Shield as well. I do plan on streaming a lot of the Pokemon games soon. But I just... I don't know. I really just wanted to go ahead and have both copies of this game. I really do like the camping aspect of it. I do like that it was open world. I do like that they've also expanded on that with Violet, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But Pokemon Sword and Shield, I think as far as it being an introduction to 3D Pokemon games, it was good, but the Unova sprites will always have a special place in my heart. So I got a little story with this game right here. I remember it was probably back around 2018. And that night was a horrible snowstorm. It was icy, icy cold outside. And Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, yes, I did pick Eevee, was having a midnight release. So in my small hometown, I risked my life to GameStop to go to the midnight release. And maybe three or four other people were there. And I finally got my copy of Pokemon Let's Go Eevee along with the little Pokeball Plus Plus. So this thing has been through it since then. But... I had a lot of fun with this game, and I'm going to give this game an 8.5 out of 10, just because I really liked it so much. I love that the Pokemon were on screen, you could walk around. I played a lot of Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, and I still kind of plan on going back through and playing it. Also, it's Kanto. Who doesn't love Kanto, you know? So, this was pretty fun to play, and it was a really good, I'm going to call it a side series on the Switch. So I do have the Wii U version of this game, but I decided to trade it in and I actually got the Pokemon Tournament DX game for the Switch. I am actually still about halfway through it. I actually never completed that one or I didn't complete the one on the Wii U either. But because I got the Wii U version, I also have this really cool card. Once again, it wouldn't be a card channel without talking about some cards, but I do have the Shadow Mewtwo, and on the back you can tell that it's an actual amiibo. This is actually in my card binder in my collection, just because, you know, you can't really use it that much in the Switch, at least I don't think you can. Let me know if you can. Uh, but yeah, I actually do have a lot of fun with um, Pokemon, and the game uh, is actually in my Switch thing because I actually transport it, so don't worry, I do have the game. But on the inside of it is Shadow Mewtwo, so that's really cool. And then, of course, the next two games to come out that I'm still working on. I actually did complete Pokemon Rescue Team DX, which is a remake of basically Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Red. Still, once again, not as good as the original. I can at least give this probably about a 7.5. Um, but it was still really good, you know, it was just in 3D. And I kind of hope that they make Explorers of Sky next. It would be really cool. And then I am still in the middle of Pokemon Snap, so I can't rate that yet. But it, it is a very beautiful game. I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and move on to the main series games again. So there were two games that came out around the same time. They only had a year gap. It was Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and it was Pokemon Legends Arceus. I've actually done a video on Legends Arceus, and it is actually one of my favorite games. I know that this is a controversial opinion that I'm about ready to share with these two games. Probably not this one, but definitely this one. This is one of my favorite Pokemon games of all time, and I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10. I really love this game. I actually bought it in Japanese too, so my copy is in Japanese. 
and uh, that's the game that I'll typically play on my Twitch. So I'm actually probably going to reset that stream that I did earlier, and I am going to just casually play through it, just kind of like with the other games that I'm doing. As for this little guy right here, I'm going to give it a 5. Oh, no. Um, just because it is a remake of my favorite series of all times, but it just doesn't live up to the expectations. Uh, granted, it's still unique, it's still cute, I think it's fine, it's just that I was kind of expecting it to be more 3D like this, and not squished down. Um, they could have just done a lot more with it, and I was just more of expecting it to be like a full complete game. I wanted it to have aspects from Platinum too, which I don't know why they, you know, just didn't throw that in, but... I don't know, um, it was just a little bit disappointing, so, like I said, I know everybody has their own opinions, and, you know, you're free to kind of fill your opinion down in the comment section, but that's just my opinion about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and of course, once again, I have a lot of love for Legends Arceus, so, we're almost done, let's talk about the main games that have came out recently. Okay, so, the last games to come out, the last main games, I have Pokemon Violet, which is my main game, I usually typically play, and I've actually put a lot of hours on it, I beat the DLC, I completed the decks and everything, I'm actually going to give Violet an 8, just because it could be a little bit better graphics wise, and I do enjoy some of the characters like Kieran, and then of course you've got Penny, and you've got Arvin, which has one of the saddest, he has one of the saddest stories in the whole series, I love the characters, I just kind of wish that the mechanics of the game were better. I'm not a big fan of terrestrialization. Oh, and going back to Sword and Shield 2, the Gigantamaxing and the Dynamaxing, it's okay. Um, could have been a little bit better, and I like the DLC too a little bit, but overall, I still think that Violet was a good game, and of course, I was different again, and I got Scarlet in Japanese, just because I kind of want to start getting Japanese and English copies of Pokemon, so... This is actually what the version, the Japanese version of the thing looks like. They come with like little pamphlets. And then obviously the American version has a map of Paldea in it. So it's actually completely different, which is really cool. And last but not least, last game in my collection, I do have Detective Pikachu in Japanese because it came with an awesome promo card. Once again, I have that in my collection. I've done a video on that as well. And this is what the inside of this case looks like. Phew. Oh. And last thing I've bought is this for Pokemon Sleep. All right, that's my collection. But thank you all so much for watching the video. I greatly appreciate it. I just want to take a break from card openings from a little bit and just sit down and talk and get to know, you know, everybody that watches my videos. Now, obviously, I've kind of been told, hey, maybe you should break it up into two channels. But I like to kind of just have everything under one. This is who I am. This is what I open. If you want to follow me on my journey, great. If not, it's okay. So... Thank you all so much for watching and supporting me. Leave a comment below, you know, tell me what all you have in your collection or what you think I should stream that I have and let me know if you want to see my entire video game collection because that's probably going to be one of the longest videos I've ever done. But until then, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment and I'll catch you all next time with more videos. Until then, peace out. See you later. Bye.